So CBTC building blocks. So now we're going into um, what makes up uh, a CBTC solution itself. So there are, uh, there are not four, I made a mistake there. There are three high level functions there. Uh, ATP, ATO, and ATS, automatic train protection, automatic train operation, and automatic train uh, supervision. These three building blocks are, are, are what define a CBTC system itself. So ATP, ATP is your automatic train protection function. Uh, this is considered vital and it's safety critical. Uh, its objective is to protect the riding public, the operate personnel, and property. That is the main objective of ATP functions uh, in a CBTC system. It has priority over ATO and ATS, meaning if the ATO system um, were to break any of the limits that are defined by the ATP system, ATP will override it and stop it, either by breaking the train, emergency breaking the train, preventing train doors from opening, uh, uh, preventing a tra train from being routed into an open switch. Um, so that's the main purpose of a ATP uh, function itself. Uh, IEEE has defined 16 ATP functions. It's in chapter six of the standard. These are all the functions that are listed. I'm not gonna go through each one. I will go through, uh, what I've done is I've characterized these, uh, categorized these into four broad topics, but these are the 16 functions that have been defined by IEEE that constitute part of the ATP. Some. Uh, may be used, some may not be, but there are some that are absolutely essential, must be part of a CBTC system, such as the very first one, the ability to determine train location uh, or safe train separation, overspeed uh, and, and braking assurance. These are essential functions in, in the, in the uh, uh, for ATP functions. Some of those that are not generally seen are at the, on the other side, which is your grade crossing, broken rail uh, detection, some of these may be there, may not be there, depending on the architecture we have. So when you take those 16, we can break them into, you can categorize them into four broad uh, categories. Uh, I've broken it up into four. Uh, first is positioning functions. The second is speed determination and monitoring functions, travel direction, routing, and interlocking functions, and miscellaneous functions. So positioning. When we look at the positioning functions defined in, uh, in IEEE, uh, it's basically what it's saying is that the, the train is able to determine its front position and its rear location. It's not just determining where the center of the train is, it's determining where the front and center of that, front and rear of that train is, basically the envelope of that train, and transmitting that to the wayside itself. The second is these individual cars that form the train. So you usually have maybe three, four, five, or six cars that make up a train or a consist. Um, the system, the train, must be able to determine if that consist has separated or broken apart or is still together. So it's, it's the ability to determine if this train is in one whole or not. Uh, and the second and the third item is uh, for position is the, the ability to keep the train safely separated. So what it's saying is that the system is able to determine ex the exact location of every single train in the system and keep them safely separated so they don't get into an, a situation where there's a, a safety hazard, where they're too close to, to each other or, or if there's a collision uh, of any kind. So these are the basic positioning functions that ATP is supposed to handle that IEEE has defined for it. Speed determination and monitoring functions. This is the ability to accurately determine the speed of the train there are speed sensors on the train, a tachometer. Uh, depending on the rotation of that, the train is able to determine how fast it's going and the location of the train in terms of uh, fine resolution of centimeters. Uh, the system has to be able to determine the speed profile of the track. You have the entire track or the alignment uh, and, and the designer should be able to determine the speed that's permitted for each part of the track, such as on a straightaway, it may be 80 kilometers an hour, on a blind turn, it may drop to 60 or 40 kilometers an hour. The CVTC system has to be aware of that and it has to ensure that it does not exceed that speed limit and stop the train. And this is all done automatically. Uh, the third, the fourth point is uh, before a train departs a platform that there are interlocks done. So the train is at a platform. It must make sure that it's completely stopped, zero speed. It must ensure that the train doors have, have closed fully before it, it departs and any other departure tests or that uh, checks it must do to determine if the system is safe to leave the platform uh, of a station. 
and the ability to determine zero speed. So for ATP, for IEEE is basically saying for speed determination, these are the main functions that the, a system must be able to uh, handle. Routing, interlocking, and movement authority functions. So this is your basic uh, switch interlocking functions or root interlocking functions. Uh, you're able to, the system is able to lock the system down if a route has been requested along the track. Um, the movement authority will advance only if the route is requested, meaning there is a reservation along the track. The route is locked for that track and dedicated for the train that it's been requested for. All switches in the path are locked and in a known position, and no obstacles are on the path. It has another train uh, or possibly tunnel ventilation doors. Maybe they're closed. Um, you have to ensure that those are, those are open. Uh, or a closed track. Maybe there's a work zone where workers are on the track, maintaining the system. There should be no obstacle in the path, and that's basically what this advance on the move authority is, is indicating. Uh, the third point is that uh, the, uh, it prevents conflicting routes. And the final point is uh, the ensure that the train travel direction matches the commanded position, meaning the route has been set and the train is moving in the direction that it's been commanded to move in and that it's not moving in the opposite direction. And this is what IEEE is saying for these for inter routing, interlocking, and moving, uh, moving authority functions. Finally, these are miscellaneous functions defined by IEEE, uh, work zones. This work zone is actually uh, a feature that some of the suppliers, um, it needs to be worked on is what I'm saying. The work zones vitally protect your workers at track level. Um, there's maintenance going on on every system around the world, some more, some less. Uh, and you have to be able to protect those workers along the track doing whatever maintenance work that may be going on. Reliance on procedures should be kept to an absolute minimum. Uh, it really should be the CBTC system that protects those workers along the track. Uh, door opening and closing, this is basically for platform and train doors. Um, the train has to ensure that doors are locked while the train is moving. It has to ensure the train is fully stopped and aligned properly at the platform before it allows those doors to open. It must make sure that the platform and the train doors are aligned with each other before they open, that they open in synchronous, uh, open in synchronous uh, with each other. Um, so it's, it's an important feature. It's an absolutely important feature because that is the main interface between the transit authority and the riding public is those doors. Broken rail detection. Now, this is a debatable function. But it's not a CBTC function. Uh, in, in my opinion, I know IEEE says this, but in my opinion, it's not a CBTC function. CBTC, by its very definition, what we talked about earlier, is the ability to determine the location of a train without track circuits. So broken rail detection is going to be a secondary auxiliary uh, feature that a transit authority can apply afterwards, but it should not be a part, a part of the CBTC itself. Um, but that's a debate that rages within the industry. I'm more on the side that it's not a, it's not a feature of CBTC and that even in fixed block signaling, broken rail detection by track circuits is not the most efficient way to determine that anyway. You need a proper track maintenance program. And if you have that on a CBTC system, there's no issue uh, with broken rail uh, detection. Finally, level crossings. I triply talks about level crossings. Um, I don't like level crossings on a CBTC system. Uh, and the reason is this. CBTC systems demand control of the entire system uh, in order for them to be able to move as many trains through the system as possible. We try to restrict anything that can slow a system down. Level crossings slow a system down, but it is a system that has to be, a function that has to be handled, uh, and there are CBTC systems that do handle it uh, and interface to it. So these are your miscellaneous functions uh, as part of ATP. ATP is vital, uh, all of the rules or all of the limits that these functions are indicating must be followed. And if they are not followed, safety or uh, emer uh, an emergency reaction must take place or must be taken by the system.